Hey, what is up, guys? I'm your boy Nick with Pikmin. Today we're gonna we're gonna be going over the full card breakdown for PFL versus Bellator. This card is on Saturday, the same day we're gonna see the UFC Mexico card. So maybe I'll do a fight companion. If we hit 50 likes on this video somehow, I'll probably do a fight companion for this card. Let me know if you guys want me to do a fight companion. And uh, make sure you guys hit the sub down below. We just hit over 1k subscribers. I appreciate you guys all for hitting the sub button. If you guys uh, like the video, it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And also leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you guys all as always. And let's get into it, guys. We're going to be going over the from, from the early prelims. We're going to move over to the uh, the main card then. Uh, we're going to start with the, all the pro fights. I'm not really doing um, any breakdown for the amateur fight. I don't really know much about those guys. but uh, we don't, And we don't have odds for the amateur fight either. So we're going to go with the first fight here, which is going to be Abdullah al Qatani taking on uh, Adu, Adu Kondala Rao. So... Al-Qahtani is a pretty sizable favorite here for good reason. He's faced a much better level competition. He's got very good route around the game, very good taking defense, very good striking. And he's a real, real prospect, I mean, in PFL right now. And um, this fight's taking place at 145, by the way. So Rao is kind of really untested. I mean, he's been fighting in India. I mean, India's not really known for their MMA game overall. I mean, so Qatani's going to win this fight. I mean, uh, I think going to finish this guy, uh, Rao. I, I see Qatani. Uh, he's got a ton of power, really good cardio, really good gas tank. He's a minus 1100 for a good reason. Um, just to be a walk in the park for him. He's got a solid chin on him. I don't really, we don't really have to worry about him getting taken, like taken down or getting knocked out here. He's very tough. I mean, really good cardio, really good striking, uh, clean striking, uh, good takedowns too. Uh, he's gonna go. For, he can go for his own takedowns. He's gonna attack submissions when people shoot on him. So um, I don't want to make this breakdown too long. I think Katani's gonna win this fight. Um, likely by uh, inside the distance is what I'm thinking. Um, I think he can knock this guy out, man. I've seen uh, Katani uh, knock people down and get a knockout stoppage. Um, and uh, his only loss was to this guy, um, uh, Elior, back to your Ulu, who's been fighting in LFA now. And um, yeah, this, that was a very close very close fight. I mean, um, could have gone either way. So uh, he could be undefeated right now, 8-0, uh, if that fight could have gone his way. But yeah, this is, is going to be a much easier fight than um, for his last couple of fights. I mean, this fight was very good. He knocked this guy out in the third round show really good cardio there so he's gonna get this done by knockout i got second on knockout for um al Qatani here and he's minus 1100 right now he's uh, al Qatani is coming in at minus 1100 way too wide i mean for me personally i mean uh maybe look at the inside the distance prop and the props drop on friday i think the p4 props normally drop on friday or thursday uh, maybe inside the distance but I'm, pro I'm thinking that's probably gonna be like minus 300 or minus 400 um Probably not gonna be betting this fight. Um, minus eleven hundred is way too wide, but it makes sense for him because uh, he's a way better fighter than this guy, um, Rao. And this guy, Rao, hasn't really fought anyone. He's been fighting in India. Um, a lot of Texas drivers that he's been fighting in India. Other than that, he hasn't really fought anyone. So Katani by a TKO a second on is the pick. All right, guys. Next fight we got women's MMA here at uh, one fifty five. We got uh, Clarissa Shields taking on Kelsey DeSantis and Clarissa Shields, she's been, uh, she's transitioned from boxing, she's a multiple world champion in boxing and uh, she's uh, she's had two fights in PFO in MMA overall, she's one in one, I mean she, uh, not, she got a knockout ground and pound stop over Brittany Elkin and she came back as a pretty sizable favorite at over 2-1 to one over Abby Montez and that was a very close fight, I mean just kind of got outworked um, with the takedowns and stuff but, um, I heard I think she's been working on her MMA game overall. So he's training out of Jackson Wink MMA, so she's training out of a very good team. The Santos trains out of MMA Masters, too, so they're both training out of a good team. But um, the Seals is 28 years old, very young, and I think she's gonna show a lot of improvements in this fight. Um, with only three, f I mean, this is gonna be her third fight in MMA overall. I think she's gonna learn a lot of lessons from the last last loss she took. She's uh, she's been back to boxing after taking that out. Um, that was back in 2021. And she's been back to boxing. Uh, she fought three times in boxing and uh, got some. Because she's on a win, three win streak in boxing, and she, now she's coming back to MMA. Um, if she's worked on her takedown defense, she should be able to get a. I don't. I don't think she's gonna knock this girl out. I know most people think she's gonna knock her out. Ninety-two percent of people are picking by knockout. I'm gonna say decision. Cause uh, Desante is very tough. She's very tough and durable. I think she's gonna get a. Um, I think uh, Clay Sarfield is probably gonna hit her with some big punches. And we're probably going to see a 30-27 decision for uh, Sealed. And she's coming into this fight as a pretty sizable favorite here. Minus 455. I don't really know. I don't really think I'll parlay her. Maybe I'll think about it. But she's got a very low level MMA experience. She hasn't really been fighting MMA for all that long. So she's only got two fights in MMA. But she's got a lot of experience in uh, boxing. So 
if this fight stays on the feet, which I think it will, I think she's going to be able to run away with the decision 30-27. Maybe a late TKO stoppage, I could see that. Maybe a referee stoppage, but I'm going to go with the decision for Clarissa Shields here. All right, guys, next up, we got um we got um Baggio, Biago Ali Walls taking on uh, Emmanuel Palacio. Now, this is uh, Ali Walls' debut here, pro debut here in MMA, so... He's done really good in amateur. He's been fighting in PFO. Um, they've been building him up slowly. And he's looked really good, man. He's passed the test every single time. Obviously, he hasn't really been fighting the best level guys out there. But they're building him up slowly. Now, they're giving him a guy who's been fighting out of Argentina. Um, this is basically a layup for him here. They're taking their time with Ali Walsh. I'm sure they're going to keep giving him these easy matchups here. And he's going to get this done. Uh, Palacio is only 19 years old, so he's still very young, or still very green on his own right. Doesn't have a lot of experience. He's only had one fight overall. Yeah, he's gonna. Ali Walsh is gonna get this done by. Um, I'm gonna say it's second on top, second on knockout for Ali Walsh here. Ali Walsh is sitting at um, minus 1,000. I mean, you really can't do much with the line. These are these are, these are guys. These are some of the widest favorites I've ever seen in in a long time. I see Ali Walls getting a TKO stop as I think uh, if you're gonna bet anything, I mean, look at the knockout profit. It's probably gonna be like minus 300 or minus 200 though. Um, maybe if I doesn't go the distance, it's probably a solid look here. Palacio does have some uh, good grappling, but um, I don't think he's gonna be able to get the takedowns on Ali Walls here. Um, Ali Walls by knockout is what I'm thinking here. Second on TKO stop is. Now he was fighting three three minute rounds in uh, amateurs. Now he's gonna be fighting five minute rounds, so maybe that changes a. Uh, Changes it a bit for him. We're gonna see him in five, five minute, five minute, uh, three rounds for the first time. I think he's gonna be more than fine. I mean, his cardio has never really been a problem for him. He got the knockout last time over uh, Joel Galarza Lopez in the second, late second round. So he should be more than fine here. Um, I got late second on knockout for Ali Walls here. All right, guys, let's move on to the next one, next prelim, the feature prelim headliner. We got uh, Gabriel Alves Braga taking on Aaron Pico. Now, um, I was, I'm 50-50 on this one. I'm not too confident in this fight now because this is going to be a tough matchup for um, Braga and Pico. I mean, this is a good, they're both equally matched. And um, Pico does have more power on the feet. He's going to be one hitting, one, the one hitting, hitting with more power, I mean. He's got more power. Um, really good takedown defense. I don't think Braga's going to be shooting any takedowns. Braga's a striker. He usually likes fighting from the outside. Uh, has a really good jab. I mean, really good straight rights, straight lefts. He's got really good striking. Doesn't really have the power that Aaron Pico has, which is why he's coming into this fight as a sizable underdog. He's coming off his first career loss, which was to Jesus Pinedo, and um, I was uh, on Jesus Pinedo there because um, he did beat Jesus Pinedo um, like 10 months back but by a close split decision, and I lost some money on Jesus Pinedo there, but I made it all back and then some on Jesus Pinedo by knockout, which is plus 250. And um, yeah, I've done pretty good picking uh, I was Braga fights. I'm 3 and 1 when I'm picking his fights. The only fight that I got wrong was that Jesus Pinedo, where he got a split decision win. Uh, even then, he was kind of gassing out. His gas tank is an issue, I think. Um, I, I do like some value in Braga here. I mean, he's opened up a plus 500. I mean, he opened up a pretty sizable underdog. He's down to um, like plus, two, plus 240 now. So there's been a lot of money coming in in Braga. And I don't think Pico should be this heavily favored. Um, at the very most, I would have Pico at minus 200 because I do think he's got more power, more fight ending power. Good striking, um, doesn't throw a lot of volume out there, which which could be a problem. I mean, this fight, he just kind of popped the shoulder out there, um, this is, which is why he lost. But uh, he's been fighting good competition in Bellator, so... Um, Pico should be able to get this done. Um, I see Pico getting this done by this season. I think he's going to be landing with more pop on his punches. Um, I know Braga is coming off his first ever knock. I lost, that was a standing TKO. That was kind of an early stoppage, maybe. Um, he was kind of getting rushed, though, by um, Pinedo. The, the, I think the referee kind of called a little bit too early. Um, but um, Pico's going to get this done, I think, by decision. Um, maybe maybe close decision. I don't think I think the odds are way too wide. There's some value on the Braga side if you guys think he's got a chance to get it done here. And, um, yeah, I think Braga can uh, probably has a chance to get it done here. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not running to the window to go better on Pico at these odds. He's sitting at like minus 300 right now. Um, yeah, um, he's a very sizable favorite here, minus 300 here. He opened up at minus 800, so the money line has money has been pouring in on uh, Braga here. But um, I do see Pico getting this done. He's been knocked out for three times. I mean, two, two, two of those knockouts were legit. 
he was knocked out twice in the first round and then this and the, his last knockout loss was a kind of a fluky injury so i'm not gonna hold that to hold that loss against him too much but henry corrales knocked him out very early on and um yeah, I got. I have to pick Aaron Pico here because it's because he's more, got more fighting power, pretty solid chin. Um, but Braga can definitely win this one. Um, so if you guys like, uh, if you guys want to make a bet on this one, I would look at Braga money line plus two forty right now. All right, guys. Next up, we got Clay Collar taking on Izzy McKee Jr. Now this is a tough fight to make a pick on because I really do think Clay Collar is really good. Um, but I do think AJ McKee can mix in takedowns, man. I mean, he's been get he was getting out wrestled by Sidney Aula. I had a bet on him there, and I was kind of sweating it because um, Sidney Aula controlled him for like 13 minutes of that fight. But the reason that uh, McKee won the fight was because he was just working more off his back. He was throwing more elbows. I mean, punches off his back. Sidney Aula was just holding him down the whole time. wasn't really doing anything from top position, which is why the judges gave McKee a 30-27, which is kind of wild because he was getting taken out control for the majority of the fight, but. Sydney Ola wasn't really doing any any work, and that fight against um, Spike Carla, that was a close fight. I mean, that was a 29-28 because uh, he was getting out wrestled in that one. He, he was taking down Spike Carla. Spike Carla just kind of gassed out later. So Sydney Ola does have a really good gas tank on him. I mean, McKee Jr. has a really good gas tank on him here. Uh, this is gonna be a striking matchup. I mean, McKee's probably gonna be uh, kicking those kicking uh, Clay Collard's body with those body kicks, uh, kicking those legs off uh, from distance, mixing in takedowns. He's way bigger than, um, not a lot, he's not that bigger than uh, Clay Collar. Honestly, I thought he was way bigger than him, but he's only got a half inch reach advantage here. Um, but Collar does have really good boxing in the pocket, man. He's got really good body shots. I mean, that's the, that's how he beat up Shane Burgos. Um, then he got wrestled by Obin St. Mercier. And uh, I was an Obin Mercier there at 2-1. to one. Um, Obin Mercier was, uh, was my lock on the card. Um, yeah, I, I got Aza McKee here getting it done. But I'm probably gonna. I'm not betting Asian McKee at these odds. I mean, it's a very three to one favorite here. But uh, more than likely, as a pick, I gotta go with Asian McKee because he's he's proven more. I mean, uh, not that Clay Collard hasn't been proven, but um, I we could definitely see Clay Collard just getting taken on by McKee because McKee does have really good grappling too. He's known as a grappler, um, but he's learned how to strike really good. But um, he's a, he came in as a grappler early on in, in MMA. He's got really good submission skills too. He submitted uh, Patricio Pitbull. He landed a head kick. I think he landed like a body kick or head kick on uh, Patricio Pitbull and then uh, submitted him with a guillotine choke. But uh, I don't see him submitting or finishing Clay Collard. I think he's probably going to win a decision more than likely as a pick. But uh, if, I can, if I'm going to make a bet on this one, I'm probably going to take uh, Clay Collard by like money line plus like 300. Clay Collard is like plus um, 210 right now. So you open up a plus 275. There's some dog money coming in on uh, Clay Collard, and I really can't blame anyone taking Clay Collard here because he's got really good. He's got a chance to win this fight. I mean, these last two fights are gonna be close. This one and uh, this last fight, Aaron Pico and Braga fight. This these fights could go either way. I mean, the odds are way too wide for this one. As a pick, I obviously gotta go with McKee and Pico because they got they're they're fighting. They've been fighting Bellator competition, but um yeah they um they have they both have uh, Aaron Pico has more power in that one. And McKee has more. Uh, has a uh, is has more finesse on the feet. I mean, uh, and has has a grappling upside. So I gotta go with AJ McKee by this season. Close this season, twenty nine, twenty eight. All right, guys. Next up, we got Tiago Santos taking on Yo 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 Romero, the sh shoulder of God. Um, I'm gonna go with the Yo Yo Romero. I think he should be able to get this done. He's been training at American Top Team for. He's been training at American Top Team forever. Um, I think Santos is more washed up right now. I really do. Uh, he hasn't looked good in a, in, in a long ass time. He beat up Johnny Walker. I mean, like, like two and a half years ago. But Yo Romero looked pretty good out there against Nemco. I mean, uh, just kind of got outworked. But that was like a five round fight. And um, he had some good moments in that fight too. Um, yeah, I gotta go with the Romero here. I, even at forty six years old, um, I, I just think that he hasn't looked he hasn't looked that bad in in his losses. He lost his play to D Phil Davis. I mean, who's a champion right now? Yeah, this, I gotta go with Romero here. Romero's coming in as an underdog in this one, and um, I think I honestly think that uh, now Phil Davis is not the underdog. <laughs> I thought Phil Davis was the champion. I mean, Phil Davis is not the champion, right? Um, I was mixing him up with someone else. 
Yeah, I was mixing him up with the, what's his name, uh, Jason Jackson, but he's not the champion. My bad for that one, but yeah, I think Romero can get this done by um, by decision, I think. It's probably going to be a close fight. Both these guys are over 40 years old, so I wouldn't really put any money on this fight, personally. But um, I could see Romero getting it done. He just, he's been active right now, too. He's been more active. He's been fighting consistently. And he's still got, he's got wins in his last uh, three fights. I mean, he's got his... He's 2-3 and three in his last couple of fights, but he's, he fought Nevadim Namkov in a five-round fight. He, then he fought um, Phil Davis, I mean, uh, Israel Sanya. So his losses are much better than uh, Thiago Santos. And um, Thiago Santos' losses aren't that terrible either. I mean, he lost to Jamal Hill by Nakar. But he put up a decent fight in that one, man. Had some good moments in that fight. And I was sweating it because I had money on Jamal Hill. I had a couple of units in Jamal Hill and... Jamal Hill took him a little bit longer to get that knockout. I mean, he got the ground and pound stoppage in the third or fourth round. But he pretty looked okay in that one. But in the last fight, he just looked horrible in that one. That was turned into a no contest. What happened in that fight? Was it like, did he pop for... Um, he, oh, he popped for um, uh, banned substances. Wow. I had no clue. Yeah, I gotta go with the Miro here by decision. Romero's coming in as a plus 100 dog year. I'm gonna go with the dog year, guys. I think he's gonna. He opened up at minus 115, so slight favorite. And action's going uh, on the Thiago Santos side. I gotta go with Romero here. Um, obviously, I don't feel too good about picking a 46 year old guy, but he just looks uh, less washed up, to be honest. All right, guys, we got Bruno uh, Capo Loza taking on now uh, Vadim Namkov. I gotta pick Nevadim Namkov here. Um, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be, he's gonna beat this guy up, Bruno Capo, Capaloza. But Capaloza has fight ending power, man. This dude has a ton of power. Pretty decent take down defense. He's got 14 wins by knockout, nine in the first round. So he's got a ton of power. Uh, but um, I think that Vadim Namkov can be, will be able to um, just overwork him. He's got better cardio, better pace that he can keep on uh, Bruno. And uh, Namka was younger too, but he's a sizable favorite here. So I'm not really parlaying. I'm not really looking to parlay Nate Deem Namka over here. But I do see him getting this done. Now Bruno Bruno Capaloza definitely has a chance to find a, like a big shot on uh, Nadim Namka. But Nadim Namka has only been knocked out like one time. I think that was by Jir Prozka. Um, was that by Jir Prozka? Yeah. That was like a 15 minute uh, no round. That was like a 15 minute fight. Um, there's no time limit. I mean, there's no rounds in that one. That was rising back in the day in 2015. That was the only time that he's ever knocked out. Yeah, Namco is going to get this done by um, by decision, I think. Likely by decision. Um, I don't think he's going to finish this guy, um, Bruno Capaloza. Bruno Capaloza is very dangerous, so, so personally not going to be betting this fight. But I see Vadim Namco getting this done by uh, decision. Vadim Namco is sitting at minus 500 right now. He opened up at minus 800, so that was way too wide of a line for him to open up at minus 8 to 1. Crazy, but I do I do see Nadim Namkov getting this done by decision. All right, guys. Next up, we got Ray Cooper the third taking on Jason Jackson. Now Jason Jackson is a champion right now. I mean, um, so he just uh, defeated uh, 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 uh Amosov. I was lucky enough I didn't make a bet on that fight. I mean, I was I was so lucky I didn't parlay Amosov because I, I I I was feeling some fraud wipes coming in from Amosov. But um, yeah, Jason Jackson just knocked him out. I mean, his takedown defense is looking solid. He's known as a wrestler. Jason Jackson has some of the best cardio out there. We just seen Ray Cooper get um, like oh grappled by Derek Brunson, and I picked Ray Cooper there, and he missed weight like crazy in that fight. Just looked horrible out there. Just didn't take that fight serious. But he's got ton of power. Uh, he's got fight ending power. Um, he's got one punch power. So he's he's got six like sixteen wins by knockout. And 11 wins in the first round. So he's got fight ending power. But I don't see him knocking on Jason Jackson. Jason Jackson is very tough and durable. Jason Jackson is going to get this done, guys. I see him getting this done by um, just out grinding him overall. I think he's just going to out grind him. Even though he showed really good power in his last fight. But Amazon just looked horrible in that fight. I see Jason Jackson getting this done by uh, decision. Maybe a late TKO stoppage. I could see late TKO stoppage if Ray Cooper gets really tired and exhausted. Um, yeah, uh, Jason Jackson gonna get this done. Um, he's gonna get this done. Uh, Jason Jackson coming in as a minus four ten. That line makes sense. He's gonna get this done by the wrestling and the pace and the cardio he can put on uh, Ray Cooper the third. Yeah, Jason Jackson for the win, thirty twenty seven or uh, fifty forty five. I mean, 
All right, guys. Next up, we got um Impaka Sangane taking on uh, Johnny Eblen. I gotta go with Johnny Eblen here, man. This dude has looked really solid. He's fourteen and zero, undefeated, and uh, he just just the cardio is unreal from this guy, man. He's good. he's on some good stuff over there from American Top Team. I've been talk I've been telling you guys, these American Top Team guys are just on the best stuff out there. And um, yeah, Johnny Eblen's gonna get this done with the, his nickname is the Pressure for for a good reason. And Pakasangani has looked really good recently, man. He's on a 6 5 inch streak right now. But, um, I mean, Jocelyn Vero just kind of gassed out in that fight, and even then, Impa wasn't able to finish him there. Um, I, I was on Impa's side there. I had a money line bet on him there, and he got it done by decision. But I couldn't really get the knockout over Jocelyn Vero. Jocelyn Vero is tough, dude, though. I'll, I'll give him that much. He's tough. But I see Johnny Eblen getting the takedowns over and over, just keeping a pace that uh, Impa can't really keep up with. I got Johnny Eblen by uh, decision here. Um, 50, 50, 49 46, I think. Impa uh, might, might hurt him a couple of times. I think he's got really He's going to be the much better striker on the feet. But I, I see Johnny Eblen getting the takedowns. I mean, uh, all the UFC fighters have been talking about how good Johnny Eblen is. I think he could be like a top five fighter in the UFC, to be honest. He could probably be a champion in the UFC. That's how good Johnny Eblen is, is with the pace and pressure. He's been training with the really good fighters, uh, with the UFC level fighters. So. I see Johnny Eblen getting this done, and he's going to get this done by, um, likely by uh, decision, I think. Um, yeah, he's going to get this done by decision. Um, even though this is a five-round fight, anything can happen. But Impa's really tough, man. He, he's only been knocked out like two times, and one of them was by Joaquin Buckley with that uh, spinning back uh, wheel kick, I think, of a spinning back kick. And uh, the other one was by Carlson Harris by um, in the first round, so... I see Johnny Eblen getting it done by uh, by decision. Could find a knockout too later if he just uh, gets into full mount. He's got a really good ground and pound, so we could definitely see like a ground and pound uh, stop is here from top. But I think Impas will, will be able to hang in there, top through some uh, top positions on the ground. But I see Johnny Eblen getting this done. I think Johnny Eblen is a solid parlor piece here. I'm a big Impa fan, bro, but I don't think he's gonna win this fight. I hope I'm wrong though. I really hope Impa gets it done somehow. But um, I think Johnny Eblen's pace and presser cardio will be too much. His wrestling is underrated still. Yeah, Eblen's going to get this done. Eblen is coming in at a minus 380 right now. He opened up at minus 62, so... It's getting a little bit too wide now, but I do see him getting this done. Even a minus 380, I think, is a solid parlay piece still. He's going to get this done. Johnny Eblen for the win by 49-46, I think. Alright, guys. Next up, we got... Uh, the main win of the evening guys make sure you guys hit the like down below make sure you guys subscribe to the channel um and uh, make sure you guys um uh, leave a comment down below for the youtube algorithm i appreciate you guys support as always we're coming up uh, like for we're on a four fight um winning winning event weekend i mean winning event uh, run right now we 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 won on the lfa 176 card we won on that uh vegas 86 card we won on that uh ksw card we won on that uh last ufc 298 like we went undefeated on the best bets uh part of the week lock of the week everything i mean we hit prop of the week at plus 300 which is uh Taporia by ko plus 300 make sure you guys hit the sub down below guys i give you guys my really solid picks week in, every week all right guys let's let's talk about the main win now we got uh renan renan Ferreira taking on ryan bader this is a tough one because Ryan Bader gets the wrestling going. He can definitely get a ground and pound stop his. But I'm gonna t I'm gonna roll the dice here on Ryan Ferreira. He's much younger. I mean, uh, Brian Bader is 40 years old. He's taking a ton of damage. Even though he's looked pretty solid, but he's been fighting guys that are like way older, way washed up. I mean, Fader and Malinenko uh, is a, is an absolute goat, but he's like 50 years old now, over like 50 years old. I mean, that was like that fight should never have been made, to be honest. And they beat up Czech Congo. I mean, who's like over 50 years old too? Um, Molden Moldovsky. I mean, and he got knocked out by Corey Anderson. I mean, I st I still remember that one. That Corey Anderson knockout was crazy. Um, yeah, that was absolutely crazy. That uh, Corey Anderson knockout, wild. And I wasn't Corey Anderson there. I wasn't expecting him to knock him out though. I mean, I was not expecting Corey Anderson to knock him out. I thought it was gonna be like a like a ground and pound stop is later with the wrestling and pace and cardio but Brian Bader definitely has that uh, grappling upside here you can definitely take down Fehra but I think Fehra has been working on that part of his game and he's a dog here he's coming into this fight as a uh, plus 124 dog 
I do like uh, Veron Ferreira. I already took a shot at him at minus 120. I should have waited. Maybe I'll put a uh, put more on him at plus one plus money now. I didn't think I didn't think the lines were gonna flip like this. He opened up at like he was up at minus one twenty for for like a while. Uh, it was like a minus one twenty at one point. Now the money has been pouring in uh, Brian Bader. Brian Bader has obviously fought the better level competition, has beaten much better guys. And um, but I see Renan for uh, getting this one. He's way younger than him. He's gonna have the speed advantage. He's way way more power on the feet. Ryan Bader's got chinned a bunch of times in the past too. He's been knocked out like five times, three in the first round. So if Corey Anderson can you knock you out, I think if Ryan Ferrer can do him. And look at this dude. Ryan Ryan Ferrer has six eight with an eighty five inch reach. Trains out of uh, Team Nagera. So I'm gonna go with the dog here on the on the main event. I got Ryan Ferrer by Tikio Stapes. And I see Renan for getting this done. All right, guys. So those are the main, card, those are the full card breakdowns. Make sure you guys hit the like down below, and uh, leave a comment down for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you guys sub to the channel, guys. We do live streams for um, all the major MMA promotions out there. Uh, we do, I do breakdowns for all the MMA, most of the MMA promotions out there. And make sure you guys check out my video on uh, UFC Mexico card. Uh, I already made, I already made my picks video for that card, like uh, two days ago. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, so. Um, I can't wait for this card, man. This card is gonna be absolutely crazy. And if you get over 50 likes on this video, man, I'll, I'll probably do a live fight companion. And we're, we're definitely gonna do a fight companion for the Mexico UFC Mexico card. So if you guys want a fight companion for this card, um, during the 12, the card starts at 12 o'clock, yeah, uh, Eastern time. So if you guys want the fight companion, make sure you guys uh, hit the like, hit the likes up, hit the like button. I mean, uh, get us to 50 50 likes, and I'll definitely do a fight companion for you. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Good luck on all your plays, and um, I, I think this card is going to be pretty decent. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.